QUT acknowledges the First Nations owners of the lands on where we gather today and pay our respects to the elders, laws, customs and creation spirits of this country. For thousands of years, the First Nations owners have gathered to share their knowledge and stories. We pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and acknowledge the important role they play within our communities. We recognise their long and continuing connection to country, the lands, winds and waters throughout Australia. We recognise that these lands have always been places of teaching, researching and learning. Hi everyone, welcome to our fifth Educator Community Hub webinar. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Care Worker Toolkit today. Um, so thank you everybody for attending. Um, as we, as that beautiful acknowledgement to country just stated, we're speaking to you today from Turrbal and Yagara lands. We're really curious to hear where you guys are from today. So please, if you know which lands you're sitting on, please could you uh, just type in the chat box there, just make sure that your um, invite is to everyone so that we can all see where you're from. Um, and it would be beautiful to see, see where you guys are from today. Hello, Turrbal and Yagara country people. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, Woodruy, Nungalan Islands. Beautiful, lovely. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen here with you. Okay, beautiful. So yeah, we're talking about the Care Worker Toolkit today. I'm curious to know just a little bit more information about uh, your discipline, your background. So what healthcare environment are you from? Uh, perhaps what educational field are you from? So we're just going to run a quick poll um, just to find out um, just a little bit more information about you, if that's all right. Beautiful. Okay, interesting to see that um, a lot of you are just starting out with PCC for You resources. So hopefully we can help um, unpack some of the mystery behind what is PCC for You, what is the Care Worker Toolkit, and um, how we can help you with that essentially. Just want to introduce the team here for you. So um, just want to um, just give big thanks generally to um, distinguished professor Patsy Yates, who is the PCC for You, so the Palliative Care Curriculum for Undergraduates. She's our lead. Um, so just want to say thank you very much for her leadership and guidance um, and the rest of the team members that, that you can see on the screen there. So we've got Kylie and Sharon with us today as well, helping to support behind the scenes. Thank you. OK, so the Care Worker Toolkit. So what is it and why did we develop it? Well, if you can cast your minds back to 2019, pre-COVID, before the world went a little bit bonkers, um, we had the um, Royal Commission um, into Aged Care Quality and Safety um, interim report came out. Um, so started to look at residential aged care facilities. Um, and we identified that we definitely had some vulnerable cohorts um, in the elderly there, and that we perhaps weren't looking after um, the elderly as well as we possibly could um, and starting to highlight that possibly uh, that was coming down to a lack of education um, in care worker and a certificate entry level um, health carers in residential aged care facilities. Uh, we also had our enrolled nurse toolkit had been implemented and we were starting to get feedback back from that. Um, so the enrolled nurse toolkit is obviously aimed at a diploma level for enrolled nurse students. Um, and we were starting to see that the enrolled nurse toolkit was actually being used to educate certificate level students, which obviously is not ideal. It's uh, pegged at a different level there. Um, so there was definitely a need to create um, a resource um, that's suitable for uh, registered training organisations to, to teach health carers. Um, we also had COVID, of course, COVID happened, didn't it? Um, changed everything. Um, and again, just reinforced that need for mandatory education, not just in the realms of infection control, but also in caring for people with chronic illness and palliative care as well. So definitely a need identified there for a resource for um, care workers. Um, so we also... Um, Develop this, we have mapped it um, for RTOs. Um, it's mapped to CHC PAL 001, deliver care services using a palliative approach. That's our unit of competency. So all of our resources meet the criteria for that unit. Um, and the two teaching packages that we were predominantly aiming for was the certificate three in individual support. 
where this particular unit is an elective unit of competency um, and also for the certificate four in ageing support where it's actually a core unit of competency. Now, as you may be aware, um, the uh, unit of competency and teaching packages are currently under review with um, Skills IQ at the moment. Um, so they're making lots of um, uh, uh, upgrades to the package essentially, still proposal stages at this moment. Um, just share my next screen with you. Um, so essentially uh, what they're doing there, just upgrading the individual support. So it will still remain an elective or proposed to remain an elective. Um, and in the Cert 4 for ageing support will still be a core unit of competency, but they are just proposing at this stage um, that the certificate three in individual support will be a prerequisite for the Cert 4 in ageing support. Okay, so what is the Care Worker Toolkit? Well, essentially, it's uh, five topics that we've broken down into easy bite-sized chunks for you. Um, so we've got the principles of palliative care, supporting care, providing care, end-of-life care, and then managing own emotional responses. Um, so those five topics are broken down further into 16 sessions. Um, and for each session, it's possible to have a certificate of participation. So as an educator, if perhaps there's just maybe just one session out of those 16 that you'd like your students to complete, that's absolutely fine. They can do that. And then once that's all completed, they can download a certificate of participation. And that's your evidence that they've reviewed our resources. Um, and there is also um, one certificate um, available. One, if they've completed the entire Care Worker Toolkit, um, there is a single certificate possible for download at the end as well. Okay, so the Care Worker Toolkit was um, predominantly designed um, very much with the learning needs of students in mind. So my previous life was as an RTO educator, um, and I certainly had a vast, a huge array of students. So very, very different learning styles, range from 16 years of age right way up to 65 years of age. Um, and I'm sure as you guys are fully aware that creates its own challenges. Um, how do you engage a 16 year old and a 65 year old um, with the same resources? Well, it's incredibly difficult. You need to be quite dynamic with the uh, resources that you're using, as I'm sure you're aware. So the Care Worker Toolkit is um, it's been designed with, it's in a contemporary style, and I'll show you through the learning management system shortly, um, but it's um, it can be used in a variety of formats. So it can be used face-to-face, -face, so you can use the Articulate Rise format, similar to a PowerPoint, if you wish, to scroll through and actually present it to your students face-to-face. -face. It can be used online as um, self-guided, self-directed learning for students. Um, and of course, it can be used in a blended format as well, so a little bit of both. Um, and it's also got some simulation activities which can be um, used in a simulation environment or as pre-reading for a simulation session as well. Um, now, some interesting uh, sort of side effects, if you like, of the Care Worker Toolkit that we identified um, is that um, it's actually being used by enrolled nurses and registered nurses as well to try and understand the role of the care worker. Um, so again, care, the Care Worker Toolkit can be used for CPD for, for other, other disciplines and other levels of nursing as well. So we do have uh, implementation support available for educators and RTOs. Um, so obviously the predominant resource is the learning management system. Um, so we've got the curriculum blueprint there. Um, now this can be found on the learning management system and also on our website. The curriculum blueprint um, highlights the topics and then breaks it down into the individual sessions and also just lets you know what media resources are available to support each of those topics spoken about in each session. Um, and the implementation guide is essentially a hard copy of the learning management system with some extra points and discussion points for educators and some implementation advice as well as to how you can actually use our resources um, in a versatile way. Okay, so just want to take you to our website at the minute. So um, this is, um, we'll just take you to the homepage here. So this is pccforyou.org.au. This is our website. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, please feel free to uh, jump in and have a look around. Um, so we've just got the site here for educators. So you can go into the university side and the health service side, and it shows you implementation advice um, and our graduate capabilities. Um, and then for the RTO section here. 
So we'll just click on there and have a look. Um, so again, it's got your implementation guide. So for the Enrolled Nurse Toolkit and the Care Worker Toolkit. Um, also got a bank of PCC for you videos. So our videos, if you've not utilized them before, I really urge you to have a look. Um, if you go onto YouTube, um, and just um, type in PCC for you. We really do have quite an extensive range of videos that can support learning for students. Um, so things like um, all of the case studies that are in the Enrolled Nurse Toolkit, all of the case studies that are within the Care Worker Toolkit. We have some expert opinion videos, um, and you'll also find their previous webinar recordings from the Educator Community Hub as well. So really, some really, really valuable high quality resources there that you can use to support your education. So if you were here previously for the Enrolled Nurse Toolkit, you'll see there that you can access the learning management system for the EN Toolkit just here. And if we keep scrolling down, there's the Care Worker Toolkit. So let's follow this and see where we go. So this is taking us directly to the learning management system. It's a shared platform with um, PEPA and with End of Life Law for, Clini Law for Clinicians. That's a mouthful. Um, we're just gonna go on the PCC for you run there and let's click on the Care Worker Toolkit following through with student version here. Now, I really wanna highlight, um, I'm gonna pick session 3.2 because it's got some really great resources that um, I believe that you guys can use in your educational um, environments um, and they're really adaptable. So we're just gonna go through, I just wanna show you um, this particular SCORM package. So as you can see, it's been designed in Articulate Rise. So it's contemporary, fresh feel, it's clean, um, very much aware of not wanting to cognitively overload people looking at the screen by bombarding them with too much information. So it's really short snippets of concise information in this format. Okay, so you can see that we've got our um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island acknowledgement there and our disclaimer as well. Um, copyright statements, Suggested citation for all of the Care Worker Toolkit resources and acknowledgements. So um, PCC for you resources are peer and consumer reviewed, and we're very much appreciative to people that give their time to do that. So just an acknowledgement of thanks to them. Okay, let's have a look at our objectives as well. So each session obviously highlights the learning objectives for that session in a clear, concise way. And then we just launch into our educational session. Now, the beauty about this learning management system, it's written in Moodle, so it's um, transportable across all devices. It can be used on a mobile phone, tablet, iPad, desktop computer. So I'm just going to scroll through. Let's have a look at understanding pain, just to give you an idea of the interactive nature of the learning management system. So again, you can see nice, clean colours, easy to read, not too much information. Um, and it's interactive, so not overwhelmingly interactive in that you've got to you know, keep pressing buttons all the time, but enough just to keep your students engaged and involved with their learning. Um, so here we're just talking about acute and chronic pain. Um, now, the other thing that we've done is we've ensured that our case study character is maintained throughout the whole of the Care Worker Toolkit. So this gentleman here, he's uh, Ben Daly. Um, so he's our case study. He's a gentleman that has been diagnosed with the recurrence of lung cancer. He's got metastases. Um, and he begins his palliative care journey himself and his wife and his children. Um, and we follow their family centered journey um, until unfortunately he passes away at the end, but um, we, we follow through his, his journey, meeting the palliative care team, um, all the professionals, we look at assessment, we look at quality of life, um, and all of those factors for the knowledge, evidence and performance criteria for the unit of competency. So again, um, you'll see here, this is Jenny. So Jenny is the main care worker in the Care Worker Toolkit. Um, so again, just to make sure that students really understand the concept, we've really integrated the case study in the text as well so that students can really understand it. So just here in this example here, Jenny is um, explaining the PQRST format for the pain assessment. Um, we'll find out a little bit more about that in the video in just a little bit. So again, some more interactive elements with the learning management system. 
Um, so looking at pain scales um, and assessment tools as well. Um, so we're really lucky in that we've, uh, we um, integrate with other palliative care initiatives. So this is a good example here of um, how we've collaborated with the um, palliative care um, outcomes co collaboration. Um, and we use the symptom assessment scale throughout the care worker toolkit. So if you haven't seen this before, it's a beautifully concise assessment tool to look at distress um, in residents, particularly within um, residential aged care facilities. Um, and there's also a lot of support available on the website for um, patients to use it, residents to use it, and also for care workers to understand how to properly use the tool. So we've got downloadable resources here so educators and students can follow along with the case studies um, and fill out their own um, symptom assessment scale as well and, and follow along with, with, with what's happening. So that's fantastic. Okay, what else have we got? So these are the uh, supportive resources that I was just talking about for the symptom assessment scale. We also used a lot of the um, pally aged resources. So if you're not familiar with these, they're a um, fantastic resource. Um, they basically explain really concisely in one A4 page um, particular elements. So if you wanted to use um, assessments um, for your students, these are a really good way of um, developing a, perhaps a compendium of um, important concepts and students can download those from the pally age website. So this um, part here is just showing you the um, video. So we'll show the video to you in just a second and you'll get to have a good look at that. Um, but we've also got downloadable transcripts. So there's 14 separate scenes that follow Ben throughout his palliative care journey. Um, and these transcripts can be downloadable and it's got pictures there and it uh, shows you which ones they're linked to. So these transcripts are really great in that you can follow exactly word for word what's happening in the, in the video if you wanted to, but you can also use these in a simulation environment um, and students can perhaps do some role play or reverse role playing. Um, so again, another way just to use those resources there. Okay, so this is just highlighting the fact that in this video here we see Jenny, the care worker, um, doing a distress assessment on Ben um, and just how that's being completed as well. Um, and again, we've got a completed symptom assessment scale there. So we just see that progress constantly happening um, so students can really identify and understand um, how these forms are completed, how a thorough assessment occurs. Now, the issue that um, we had creating the Care Worker Toolkit um, was basically around the fact that there are actually a multitude of jobs which um, you, could, you could be potentially qualified for once the individual support or aged support certificate has been, um, has, has been obtained. Um, and lots of those have very different levels of documentation abilities. So we've been very concise and clear in the Care Worker Toolkit about documentation and about documentation requirements. Um, so particularly the legalities of documentation um, and also including the really important factors of subjective and objective information about you know, withholding subjective comments, particularly when you're documenting anything on progress notes. Um, I'll give you an example of that in just a second. So again, more interactive resources here. And again, a little bit of text there just explaining things. So here we go talking about the documentation. So just talking about the legalities of documentation. And again, just some more interactive resources for students just to try and identify their learning. So here's a good example here of a, a GIF just um, explaining that subjective objective information that, you know, we can't say in a progress notes, Ben was cranky today. Uh, that's not acceptable. What does that mean? We need to really talk about the facts. What were the facts? Uh, that, that we, you know, the tangible data that we can put down there. Well, he was frustrated. He was short of breath and that made him feel really frustrated. Yeah, so really starting to explore the facts, the objective information here. So once again, we've got um, all our completed documentation. So we're following the students on this journey, um, looking at the, care, the um, case study. So we've got the completed symptom assessment scale that we've looked at in the video. And um, we've got the completed care plan as well. So I'll give you a quick example of this. Obviously your care plans are different depending on where you work. So this is um, our, uh, our version of the care plan, but basically uh, um, holding the same information. So looking at the activities of daily living, yeah, identifying particular needs for Ben and his family as well. 
Um, and then starting to look at um, how are goals created as well. So just so that the students are aware what kind of information goes into a goal, that goals need to be smart, they need to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, set within a time frame. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, um, and then we just got our progress notes as well, our com uh, completed progress notes that we showed earlier. Now, the other thing that we've got within this particular session, so session 3.2, um, we've developed two case studies. Um, so really looking at um, cultural safety. Um, we've um, identified two case studies here. So the first lady, um, this is Vika. So Vika is an Aboriginal lady um, who has end-stage renal failure, um, and she's expressed a desire to return to country. Um, as this is looking at all of those quality issues about how do we maintain Vika's quality of life, um, what is important to her and also to her family, and how can we make sure that we're supporting her properly and making sure that she gets the care that she wants and she needs. So I'll just give you a quick example of that. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, so this is just the, the summary there. We've got part one of Vika's journey, just explaining um, her background story. Um, so discussion point one, so this is a great resource that can be used um, for students in small groups, maybe they can troubleshoot it, or it can be used in a guided problem based learning session. Um, so just looking at the cultural and practical requirements that um, Vika and her family um, really need to be addressed effectively. Um, and then we um, expand on Vika's um, story um, and just give a bit more information there. Um, basically enough information there so that students can then go and complete the symptom assessment scale by proxy. Um, and again, detailing that information, those particular um, holistic aspects um, of Vika's life to ensure that we're addressing her needs effectively. Um, and again, students having a go at um, completing progress notes as well. So that's Vika's journey. Um, the other case study that we have is for Mr. Chen. Um, now, Mr. Chen is a Chinese gentleman who has recently moved into a residential aged care facility. Um, now, he speaks very little English um, and um, he's basically feeling very frustrated, alone, isolated because he's not understanding the full extent of one, his illness, two, what's going to happen to him, three, just about everything that's going on around him. He's feeling very frustrated, alone and isolated from his faith as well. Um, so again, using the same format, so looking at a real, a, a robust holistic assessment, um, completing um, distress scores on Mr. Mr. Chen as well, um, and identifying his needs. Okay, so we've got um, starting to see quite a few resources there. Um, the other thing that we've got at the end of each session are um, session reflection flip cards. So this is just a very informal test for students to just make sure that they actually understood that content in the session. Um, so, for example, one of the flip cards here, so describe some common changing needs in palliative care. Well, perhaps the student's thinking, oh, I don't know, I can't remember, I'm not sure. So there's a tip on the back. So think about the symptom assessment scale. What, what were you looking for? What did it say on that symptom assessment scale? So just prompting students to go back and think, oh, yeah, the fatigue, the breathing, the pain. Yeah. So we've got those uh, flip cards at the end. Um, of, of each session there. Um, the other thing that we have is um, glossary as well at the end, um, quite an extensive glossary that explains uh, what is happening there for students. Okay, so um, I've explained a little bit about Ben. So as I said, Ben is our case study gentleman that we see throughout his palliative care journey. Um, uh, what I'd like to do now is just maybe just have a quick look at that video and we can just identify um, um, just see Jenny completing that symptom assessment scale. Thanks, Sharon. Hey, Ben, how are you? I just wanted to have a chat and see how things are going. Is that okay? Oh, hi, Jenny. Thanks. I'm feeling a bit crook today, to be honest. That doesn't sound good. Let's have a chat and see what's happening. Hopefully I can sort the problem with the nursing team. Thanks, Jenny. I'd like to ask a few questions about how you've been feeling and the symptoms you may have been having. We'll do this scoring system once a day now, unless there are any changes in your care plan. Now, your answers need to be about the past 24 hour period. I have this visual symptom assessment scale. It's basically a big colorful ruler scale to measure your distress so that we can provide the appropriate treatment to help. I'm going to ask you how distressed you've been feeling about certain aspects of your life. 
and I'd like you to give me a score from zero to 10. So zero means you're perfectly happy with no distress. 10 tells me you're really upset, bothered and distressed by the symptoms. If you feel you may be sat in the middle somewhere, then point to the face or number that you feel best tells me how distressed you're feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Uh, if it's really bad, it'll be a 10. No problem, zero. Great, that's it. Okay, so you mentioned previously that you've had some issues sleeping. How has your sleeping been over the past 24 hours? Well, actually, that's a difficult one to answer. I seem to sleep all the blooming time. I fell asleep talking to Jan yesterday, but the thing is, all this sleep I'm doing, I don't feel like I've had a good sleep for months. It makes no sense. I'm not sure how to score that. Okay, you've answered two questions for me at once. Great. So, sleeping doesn't appear to be an issue because you can fall asleep okay, but you never feel rested. Is that right? Uh, spot on. So, the feeling of always being tired is fatigue. What score would you give for the distress levels you feel about your sleeping? I also need another score for the distress you may feel regarding how tired you have been, even though you may feel like you may have slept lots. I'd say two for sleeping. I seriously don't have any issues falling asleep. <laughs> I'd actually say six to fatigue. I'm just so tired all the time. All right, what about your appetite? Are you feeling hungry and wanting to eat? No, not really. I eat because I, I know I need to with my diabetes and all that, but I never really fancy it and I rarely eat everything they give me. I'd say a three, I think. Thanks, Ben. Do you feel nauseous, sick at all? Yep. Not like I'm about to be sick, but enough to make me feel a bit average all the time, you know? I guess I'd say a four. Okay, how about your bowels? Having any problems going to the toilet and opening your bowels? Ah, all right, oh. a bit bunged up, really. I don't get things moving like I used to. I'm still going every day, just a bit slow. I'd say a three. What about your breathing? Any problems there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. if I'm not sitting up properly, I feel like I'm trying to catch my breath. Horrible feeling. The care worker last night stacked a load of pillows up for me because I was having a real problem. It's scary, you know. I'd say a six. What about your pain? Any pain? Yeah, it's my blooming chest right here. Okay. What brings the pain on? I've had this cough for years, but I'm coughing up this sticky, horrible yellow-green stuff and I feel like I've had a bad chesty cold, you know. The coughing is causing me even more pain in my chest than usual. What does the pain feel like? How would you describe it? Well, my normal pain is like I've got a cramp or a stitch, you know, when you go for a run. But right up under my rib cage in the middle here, after I cough up that horrible stuff, my lungs feel like they're burning. Does it spread anywhere or stay in the same place? No, it stays put in the same place. Can you put a score on how distressed you are by the pain from zero to 10? Zero equals no distress. 10 equals really agitated and very distressed. Hmm, probably a six. Thanks, Ben. I'll have a chat with the nurse and give her the information you have provided. We can help you with these symptoms you're experiencing. I'll be back very shortly. Thanks, Jenny. Um, just want to put it out to you guys. How did you find that video? Is this um, a resource that you think would be helpful for, for your students? Has anyone used this video? No, not yet. Okay. Um, okay. All right. What um, I like There's to... a few comments, Steph, coming in oh. on the chat. Um, yeah. Alison says it's a good video. Helen says excellent with three exclamation marks. Oh. So she must be excited about it. Extremely helpful, excellent, and great resource. So there we go. So the great things about our resources is, I mean, yes, we have everything up there on the learning management system for you, um, but it's not prescriptive. You don't have to use the whole thing. If there's bits and pieces of it that you want to use, then that's absolutely fine. Obviously, as long as you reference PCC for you, um, but that's absolutely fine. Um, and in particular, um, again, I know I keep pushing the PCC for you videos, but they really are phenomenal. So make sure you have a look at the, the YouTube site there for, for those resources. Okay, let's just have a quick look at our PowerPoint. So just a quick reminder there about all of those different resources that you saw. Um, I just want you to have a think about the different ways that you could perhaps integrate PCC4U resources 
in with your students and your educational environment. Um, so what we're going to do um, is we might just split you guys up into um, just a couple of breakout rooms just for five or six minutes um, and just let you guys just bounce ideas off one another as to how you could use these resources. So I've given you a few ideas. Um, are there any other innovative ways that you can think of um, to, to, to really help your students and be creative as to you know, how we can go about doing that? Um, so I so say, well, we'll go into the breakout room, it'll be five or six minutes, um, and then we'll bring you all back just to um, have a bit of a chat about it. Now, within this breakout room, we will actually have um, the Padlet board available. So if you've been with us before, you'll be quite familiar with the Padlet board setup now. If you haven't, it's very simple. Just click on the link that will be coming up in the chat box there. Um, and it will pop up for you. Now, just to warn you, it's an interactive document, so um, you may well see other people typing at the same time. If you want to put in a comment, you just double click on the board and the magic box appears and you can type in your information there. Um, that's one way of doing it, or you can just click on the pink pencil, the pink, pink plus sign there, and that will do the same thing and create your entry point for you. Alrighty, we might split you up into some breakout rooms and we'll see you uh, very shortly. Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, hopefully you found that session helpful. Did it help you just to uh, just have a good think about, well, how can I use these resources? How can they suit my needs? Um, anyone come up with anything super inventive or innovative should be the word? No, nope. all right, let me have a look at your evidence on your, on your Padlet. Let's have a look. Um, so what have we got? Integrates cultural aspects of learning with the client and clinician. Um, so symptom assessment scores comes in seven like several languages. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's a fantastic point about the SAS. There's so much supportive evidence there to be able to use this effectively and properly more correctly. Um, yeah. So the fact that it comes in several different languages is wonderful so that we can get family on board with assessment as well. So really um, properly, robustly assessing people. Um, so simulation after watching resources and completing the symptom assessment scale. Yeah, so great. So the students can watch, watch it happening, then get download the evidence themselves, the symptom assessment scores, um, and go and do some symptom assessments um, on, on friends or do you know what I mean? simulation patients, volunteer patients. Absolutely. Um, reflective sessions after watching videos, beautiful. Yeah, so really getting students to pinpoint the principles. Well, what were the important points that came out of that video? Well, that pain score, it wasn't just a point of asking how distressed are you at zero to 10. She really gave a good robust assessment there, didn't she? And she used a framework to do that. She used the PQRST framework to, to ensure that she did it properly and then reported it back to the registered nurse. So yeah, getting them to highlight the, the, the pertinent points. What have we got here? Would be great for in-service in aged care. Absolutely, yeah, great point. Really good point. So really short, um, concise um, sessions. Um, yeah, so you know you can run a whole session, couldn't you? Or just pick um, some particular videos. Absolutely. Uh, video short, short snapshots makes you concentrate and think. Um, absolutely. So the, a big component um, of the creation of the Care Worker Toolkit was about not cognitively overloading people. I think when you do that, you lose them. So it's about maintaining that um, engagement all the way along. Um, so short, sharp, snappy, little concise bits of information that can be um, digested easily. Absolutely. Beautiful. OK, well, thank you very much for being involved with that. Um, that is phenomenal. All right, so um, what I would like to do now is just give um, a, a basically an implementation example. So um, when the Care Worker Toolkit was developed, we um, put it out for peer review and also consumer review. Um, and we've just got a um, presentation now from one of our consumer reviewers. Her name is Genevieve Cook. Um, she comes from a very unique perspective in that she has um, started off her healthcare education at a certificate level. She then progressed to do a diploma of nursing um, and it become an enrolled nurse. She is now doing her registered nurse training and is almost about to complete that. And she's about to go on and become um, do um, train to be a doctor as well. So she really thoroughly understands um, healthcare profession, the healthcare profession. Um, and um, just want to share with you her, her points that she identified from looking and reviewing the Care Worker Toolkit. Thanks, Sharon. Hello, I'm Genevieve. I'm a consumer reviewer for the Palliative Care Worker Toolkit. Um, and I'm just discussing my perspective of this module um, and its effectiveness 
in implementation from a couple of different perspectives as a student, um, as well as entering into the healthcare setting as a student. Um, I started my nursing journey as a Certificate 3 in Health Service Assistant. Um, I then went on to complete a diploma and I am currently in my third year as a registered nursing student. Um, so I found this course was actually, even though I was just reviewing it, um, it was a great resource of revision in palliative care for myself, as well as a, um, I'd say a great CPD course as well. In um, There was lots of information there that I didn't know or hadn't considered before. So um, first, I just thought the content was really engaging. Um, the information covered in each topic, I felt gave enough depth to inform understanding of palliative care Um, but also even though the nature of palliative care can be very complex um, the content was covered in a way that didn't leave me feeling overwhelmed um, with content or that I needed to study beyond the scope of a certificate to achieve um, that level of understanding Um, And there was still plenty of resources if I wanted to go and do further study within this area, within the unit. So I thought, yeah, the information was presented in a really good way that really flowed nicely with the use of lots of not just text, um, like reading text, but also video resources. Um, And I particularly loved the use of the case study throughout the module. I felt this... um, really contextualize the information that was covered in the unit into more of a real life scenario. For example, um, as someone coming into healthcare studies at a certificate level, I felt if you've never seen or never been within the healthcare environment, it really provided context for new information. Um, But on the flip side, if you have been within healthcare, and you do have background knowledge already, it really allows you to link the information you're reading to maybe previous examples or previous scenarios that you'd been to be able to kind of link all the dots and go, oh, I have seen that before. um, And now I can apply these new skills I'm learning within palliative care to that scenario. Um, That was definitely the case for myself when studying these topics. Um, As a student, registered nurse I actually haven't done any unit dedicated to palliative care majority of my palliative care knowledge has come either through portions covered through other units um, or through my diploma of nursing I did do a bit of palliative care studies Um, so I think this was just a great consolidation of all those bits and pieces of information that I had heard and compiling it into one resource. Um, Some of the new things for me were actually the importance of family and carer support. Um, For example, throughout my registered nursing studies, um, I focused a lot on patient-centered care, um, but this really provided a good scope on what is more family-centered care um, and looking at not only the individual that we're caring for, but also their support systems and their carers and going are they supported to care for this patient on a palliative care journey Um, so I think that was really helpful for me. Um, This unit also really helped me on placement. Um, At the time I was reviewing this I was on placement in a medical surgical ward um, and there were many patients Um, with palliative care services or palliative care teams involved Um, and this unit actually really provided me with good knowledge on what are advanced care directives, how does this impact the care we deliver in hospital, um, the treatments we may be providing, those sorts of things. Um, Another area as well is palliative dementia patients. Um, On this medical surgical ward There were several palliative dementia patients that I was caring for and really kind of understanding what their needs would be and what the needs of the families would be as well and the carers um, and the supports that they might need upon discharge and going home. Um, Additionally, this resource was a great um, revision on self-care practices for me. 
and I suppose emotional response to death and dying. Um, I've previously done placements in oncology and at the time I don't think I appreciated um, how that had affected me um, and my response to the passing of patients and caring for families going through grief. So I think this resource, particularly topic five, really helped me to unpack some of those thoughts I had at the time and provide me with some real practical skills going forward in my nursing practice, um, in dealing with my own emotions um, when patients are passing or in palliative care or family grief and those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, reflecting on my journey as entering into a certificate level, I think it can be very daunting. Um, having I had limited knowledge of the healthcare system and how to collaborate within that. Um, so I think I was very unfamiliar with the language used. Um, but I think this resource provided a great education on not only the principles of palliative care, but also common tom terminology, healthcare um, roles within the palliative team and what is the role of someone who's trained at a certificate level in this environment. Um, so I think this was a great resource if you're entering in at a certificate level. Um, further, I also had, at the time, I had very limited knowledge on how to access reputable sources and what are reputable sources um, to inform knowledge on healthcare um, and palliative principles. Um, so the incorporation of the video content and links to palliative care um, online sites, I think was a great starting place to build on the knowledge gained through these studies um, and inform your ongoing practice. Um, Beautiful. So many thanks to Genevieve for providing us with that implementation example. She's quite an eloquent young lady. Um, just uh, uh, like to hear your thoughts on um, perhaps Genevieve's content from what she said um, and also any of the other points. Um, I know Genevieve did raise a couple of um, really interesting points that she noted about the Care Worker Toolkit. So she mentioned the terminology. Um, as I said, we have got the glossary at the end of every session as well. So if there is wording that students are not um, understanding, they can scroll through um, at the end of every session and identify what that means. Um, the other thing she touched on as well was looking um, for evidence-based articles. So certainly the Care Worker Toolkit starts to um, identify um, what are suitable resources, what are suitable academic resources. So um, starting to push that evidence-based practice early on in um, health, 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 healthcare careers. Um, so and looking at other initiatives, so for example, LDAC, um, so the um, end of life directions in aged care using their resources, um, end of life essentials, um, palliative care Australia. So lots of other really credible palliative care initiatives in Australia. Um, so I just want to put it out to you guys, any questions about anything at all? Anything that's been highlighted in the chat box there? I thought okay. I saw a hand up before, but I'm um, not sure. Nope. Well, I might just, I might just ask, do you, do you know if it's being used in the TAFE sector then for delivery of the, you know, the CERT 3? Are you aware of, of that? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's gone out to um, numerous registered training organisations um, for to, to be used. Yeah, absolutely. And it has been um, taken up by, by uh, uh, some particular TAFEs across the country as well. Yeah. Which is who it's predominantly designed for, RTOs. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions at all? There's a question in the chat around, can this be completed as part of my professional development? Um, and I think Steph, you've touched on this as well, the acknowledgement that it can be used as a can resource for continuing professional development. So that would be self, self-directed learning and um, putting together your hours of learning and putting that together in a CPD format. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, if you're nursing, obviously the uh, criteria there from upper is just that you make a reflection on it. So as long as you've watched the resources and provided your own reflection, if you're audited, then absolutely you can go ahead and use it as CPD for your understanding of the, the role of the care worker. Absolutely. 
Okay, alrighty. So I just want to leave you with a little bit of a recap there for the uh, Care Worker Toolkit. If you have any questions, um, if something's bugging you, you don't, you know, don't know how you can implement this, how can you implement this within your um, registered training organisation, please feel free to um, drop us a line. Um, we've got our contact details on the website. Um, so there's a contact page there where you can drop us an email and we're more than happy to spend some time talking through how we can support you to support your students. Okay, so just a reminder that the next um, Educator Community Hub um, will be happening on the 20th of July, um, and that will be on teaching culturally responsive palliative care for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Now, we would just like to finish up with a little poll, if that's all right, um, just to see how you found this session. Was it helpful? Hopefully you've uh, gained a little bit of um, inspiration and knowledge from this session, we hope so. Um, just like to hear, what, hear your thoughts on that. We'll just give you a couple of minutes just to finish that one. Beautiful. Ah, it's very good to know that you all found it very helpful. So yeah, I hope that you um, take away from this session. Um, there's, you know, feel free to use little snippets of our resources. Absolutely fine. We are here to provide you with assistance. Um, and if you want to engage with our resources, that is um, fantastic. We'll be helping you as well as part of your RTO commitments, your ASCA commitments, uh, commitments even, um, to... Um, uh, engage with industry so i'm um, more than happy to help more than happy to have a conversation with you if you need support um, implementing any of the pcc for you resources in particular the care worker toolkit so just like to say thank you very much um, we're finishing just a little bit ahead of time there um really appreciate your um, engagement with this session today um, and we very much hope to see you again on the 20th of july many thanks <laughs>